Here it is, the all new Ford Ranger. We picked this one up recently and we've headed out straight into the bush because we wanna do a thorough off-road review of this model. And we've got an interesting specification as well. A lot of people wanna know about the Wild Track, the top specification one. We have covered that in a review as well, but I reckon this XLT is a bit of an unsung hero in the range. It's the cheapest V6 model you can get into, and you can also option it up with some pretty cool technology at the same time. But we're gonna run you through everything you need to know about this Ranger today from an off-road point of view. Performance, interior, all the little details, how it drives as well. There's a lot to get through, so let's go for it. This Ford Ranger XLT V6 is priced at $64,190 before on-road costs. That's $2,500 less than a Ranger Sport V6, and it's $3,000 more than the same Ranger XLT with the 2.0-litre bi-turbo motor. The four-wheel drive dual cab range starts with a 2.0-litre single-turbo XL variant, which is priced from $49,930 before on-road costs. The flagship is the Wild Track specification with the V6 engine, and that is priced from $70,190, also before on-road costs. Where the single turbo variant has a six-speed automatic gearbox, both bi-turbo and V6 engines come with a 10-speed auto, and that's also with a low-range transfer case and locking rear differential. The V6 variant also gets an automatically controlled all-wheel drive functionality on-road. Where the 2.0-litre twin-turbocharged diesel engine makes 154 kilowatts and 500 newton meters, the larger V6 engine does better in both regards. There's 184 kilowatts and 600 newton meters available here, both of which kick in lower in the rev range. So while this mid-spec Ranger might be priced closer to top specification rivals, it does carry a solid punch in terms of equipment and specification. There is a 10-inch infotainment display and 8-inch digital instrument cluster. There's also loads of safety equipment, dual zone climate control, a tow bar, keyless entry and push button start. More basic things for this XLT includes things like cloth seat trimming with manual adjustment, 17 inch alloy wheels and the emission of some additional off-road driving modes that the Sport and Wild Track both have. In terms of overall dimensions, this Ford Ranger hasn't changed dramatically from the previous generation model, but it has changed in a few parts. This is around about the same length overall as the previous generation model, but it is a bit wider and it's got a 50 millimeter wider wheel track. The wheelbase has grown by 50 mils as well. You're now looking at 3,270 millimeters. The old generation Ranger was one of the biggest in terms of wheel track in its class, and this one has just grown even more again. They've done that by moving this front wheel forward. So in terms of departure angle, that's mostly the same. Your approach angle will be improved a little bit, but your ramp over will be not so good. And that's generally speaking the first place where you're gonna run out of ground clearance off-road in one of these dual cab utes. These side steps, they're good to have. They're a little bit handy, but once again, as is often the case, they're a little bit flimsy. So they're not gonna take big hits off-road particularly well. You've got some bash plates under here. I had a look underneath before. There's a bash plate for the steering and the engine and a small one for the transfer case as well. They're all steel, which is good to see. Maybe a little bit flimsy. I haven't given them a good hit yet, so we'll see how they go. But once again, if they do look a little bit worse for wear, you're probably better off upgrading to those with some aftermarket stuff. We've got some optional all-terrain tires in this case. That's a $500 option for this XLT. And they're not a super aggressive all-terrain. They seem to be quite well behaved on the bitumen and we'll see how they go off-road in a minute, but not a bad option if you wanna have this ready to go off the showroom floor. And it's also very good to see some disc brakes in a four-wheel drive ute. Lower specification models still have drums, but in this V6 spec, we do have discs, and that is great to see. A lot of people will say, oh yeah, drum brakes, they're fine, they're fit for purpose in this sort of thing. Yeah, sure they are, they do the job, but these will do the job better. It's really good to see discs on the rear of a four-wheel drive ute in Australia. And another minor detail, which the real four-wheel drive freaks might find interesting, shout out to my friend Evan, because he picked this up first. I didn't, but I'll take the glory now for picking it out. The rear differential has changed in this Ranger. It's moved to a Dana-style rear diff with a removable back plate instead of having a removable pinion on the front. 
And that comes from Ford trying to up the GVM and GCM of this Ranger. So that diff does have a higher load capacity than the previous generation model. And you'll also see some aftermarket companies, I'm sure, come out with some aftermarket diff cover options as well. This step isn't just for standing around, looking silly and shooting the breeze with your mates. Ford has engineered this to take a fair load. And if you stick your head underneath, you'll see all the bracketry work that has gone on to make this a solid step. And I can vouch for you, it is. I'm a little close to 100 kilos and I care to admit. And look at this. No dramas at all. And that is there just to make the tub a bit more accessible, especially when you've got something like a sports bar here. You're going to find yourself reaching over to try and get into the back of your ute. But with your step here, you can easily reach over or even you can climb in nice and easy. How good is that? The party tricks don't stop at this rear step here as much as I do love it. Ford have sweated the details clearly across the length of this Ranger and you can see a few really nice ones here in the tub as well. Firstly, I've got a house key out just to pop this thing out, but Ford have put four bolt holes in each corner here of the Ranger. So you can bolt on something like an extra rack, maybe even like a ladder rack, something like that. You've got a lot of options here for putting something in aftermarket, which is really smart and it's nicely accessible as well. Now I'll pop down this tailgate, nicely weighted as all modern dual cab ute tailgate should be. Small detail here, Ford made this red. So it's a little bit more visible and a little bit more safe. You'll see here, we've got a measuring tape. Now, I'm not sure if someone building a house is gonna use that to measure up wood for the build, but maybe you can measure how big or small that fish you just caught is on here. Pretty handy thing to have. And you've also got these things here, so you can drop a C-clamp on there and maybe do a bit of cutting or handyman work around the house in this car. We've got a spray and tub liner fitted to this Ranger. That is a $900 option in this case. Probably a little bit expensive in my books and you can get it cheaper from the aftermarket, but at least it is a top quality job here in terms of how they've done the spray in and that's gonna last the life of the car. You can also get a drop-in tub liner as well and some of the higher specification models have that as standard. We've also got a 12 volt plug here. Massive, massive cover on it. I thought it might've been a household plug when I first saw it, but it's just a 12 volt one. Looks nice and weatherproof. Good to have power outlets in the back here. And Ford have put not only four, but six tie down points in the back here. So a little bit better than your average. And that kind of sums up the Ranger overall. They've just gone that little bit of extra detail and a little bit further at every turn. Here it is, the mighty V6 under the bonnet of the Ford Ranger. This is a motor that has been around for quite a while. It's seen use in a variety of makes and models over the years, but it's the first time it's been used in this Ranger. And 600 Newton meters is a very solid number for the segment. There's a few other details to talk about under here. You'll notice this engine is pushed back quite noticeably. That's because Ford have moved the front diff forward and they've pushed the engine back. And that's good for handling and that sort of thing. But also I think it makes room for future electrification of this powertrain down the track. But for things like today, you do have a little bit of space there. It's nice to have space in terms of cooling this engine as you're running. And you also notice the alternator in this V6. Unfortunately, like a lot of other V configuration engines these days, it's low mounted down there on the driver's side of the engine bay. So if you are gonna go and play in the mud for a while, get the garden hose out and give that a good spray out when you're finished. In terms of playing in the mud also, this is your air intake here. That's the air box there. And this air intake actually seals up against the bonnet here. This is a pretty popular design these days. So that actually draws down here, through here, and actually through the top of the grill. So that is kind of, call that the limit of your waiting depth before you muck around with fitting snorkels and that sort of thing. Another detail which I love, and I think Ford have shamelessly stolen this from the Toyota Ideas book, but I don't mind because it's great to see in a new four-wheel drive. There is a space here for a second battery. It fits in just underneath this washer bottle filler neck here. You will need a bracket to fit it because it's not a flat bottom on there, but you can fit a good size 12 volt battery, like 100 amp hour, N70 or something like that will go in nicely. So if you're gonna head out camping pretty soon, you've already got a spot for your second battery, that's awesome. 
In our first video review of the Ranger, we were looking at the Wild Track model top specification, and everyone loves a top spec dual cab ute. But this time we are in XLT, and this is a spec that I really like personally, and I think it would work for a lot of people who maybe don't have as big a budget or are just a little bit more pragmatic in their choice of ute. We haven't got the fancy leather and electric seats. These are cloth and manually adjustable in this XLT spec, but they're comfortable enough. They're just as comfortable as the leather ones, actually, and I do really like it from a point of view. If you're gonna put seat covers on it anyway, you're gonna be going off-road, these are gonna be fine for the job. You've also got a smaller infotainment display in this XLT. Sport also gets this one, it's about 10 inches. The Wild Track model gets 12, and obviously, Bigger is better all the time, but I don't feel like you're left wanting with this infotainment display here. It's a good operating system. There's a lot of spec and details going on in there. And you also, because the screen is smaller, you get a larger space down here for storing stuff. You don't get the wireless charging pad, but you can still stick your phone there. You can plug it in. There's a USB and a USB-C point. You've also got a spot here for packing a few things in. It's a small spot, but Ford give you the little hint. Maybe you can fit a thing of takeaway chips in there. You've got two cup holders, that's all normal. And I do like this storage shelf on the front here. Like I said in the other video, they've definitely stolen that from a Land Rover Defender, I think, maybe a Toyota Kluger, but it makes a lot of sense. Now, one thing I don't like about this XLT and every other spec other than Wild Track. This misses out on those extra cup holders under the air vents. It almost looks like they forgot to fit them because you've just got this empty space here, which is, I mean, it's a storage space, but it's kind of small and not really usable for anything. You can't stick your phone in there. And in this spec, you also miss out on that extra glove box on top there, which would be really handy for keeping things out of sight sometimes and storing a few extra bits and bobs when you're on the road. I would love to see that stuff trickle down into the lower specifications because this is the kind of ute that people actually use for off-road and everyday usage. So those things would be really handy in an XLT specification. I'll talk a little bit more about this infotainment display here because this is a new portrait style system that they've got in the new Ranger and it's also running a new operating system. It's a fairly complex system. There is a lot going on here and it does really mimic something you'd find in a iPad or some sort of modern device like that. It's quite slick and easy to use, but you do need to kind of learn where things are and where they're hidden away. A few things to note here, we've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and you can run them both as wired or wireless, depending on what you prefer. There's a few funny things going on here. There's like a sketching thing, which I don't know if it's really that useful. You can use that if you want. You've got built-in navigation for when your phone reception runs out. That is a handy thing to have. And we've got an option pack fitted to this XLT. It costs $900, but it gives you a 360 degree camera system and puddle lamps. Now puddle lamps, yeah, you can take them or leave them, right? But that also feeds into this thing called zone lighting, which this Ford Ranger has. So you can press this button here, you go in, you can turn this zone lighting thing on and you can actually control the headlights, the lights at the back as well, and the ones on the side. So the idea there is if you're camping, you're out the front, you're doing something on the car, you just need a bit of extra light. You can control these from here without turning the rest of the car on and just give you a bit of ambient lighting around the car. It's a really smart feature and you can also control these via your app, the Ford Pass app. You log on, you can connect your car up and all that sort of thing. So that's pretty cool to see. And I'll just show you these cameras here. You're paying $900 for these cameras and an option, so you would want them to be good quality, and thankfully they are. There's good resolution there, you can see what's going on. And as much as these are handy for something like a shopping center car park, something like that, this is also handy for off-road, especially if you don't have someone outside spotting you where you want to go. This will help you navigate through the tricky sections. You can look behind to see what's going on. You can get a bit of a surround view up front, and even if you're putting a trailer on the tow ball, you can go for this view here so you can really line it up nicely when you're reversing. Next to this infotainment display here is something new for the four-wheel drive ute scene in Australia. I've seen it in America a few times before, but you've actually got an integrated trailer brake system here. So normally if you have a four-wheel drive, you fit a tow bar, you'll have to go and get an aftermarket electric brake controller fitted. Not anymore with this Ranger. You get a tow bar fitted, you also get this thing here. You can control the brakes manually via this thing here. The car is beeping at me while I do it and you can control the gain upwards and downwards. 
And if you're going off-road and you're towing at the same time, it is in a smart spot. It's easy to get to there if you do need to operate those brakes separately from the car while you're going off-road. Now, in terms of other controls, this gear shifter here, we've got a V6 powered Ranger at the moment. Lower specifications do have a different, more traditional style shifter, but in this case, we've got what's called an e-shifter, electronic shifter for the 10-speed automatic gearbox. Ford was apparently being pressured a little bit by Global Powers to put a rotary dial into this Ranger, but when they spoke to customers, people who buy this Ranger, they said, no, thank you. We don't want a rotary dial. We want something manual that we can grab and control. And this, it almost looks like a golf putter or something like that, but you stick your hand over the top there, press a button at the front, and that allows you to shift through the ratios. Now you've got a manual control here on the side. It's a little bit different to most others. There's actually buttons that you press to go up and down. The good news is there that this will actually hold the gears. It won't override things when you do reach the top of the rev range. That is handy for compression braking, going down hills, and that sort of thing. But it does have another cool trick. If you happen to leave this thing in drive by accident, you know, guilty, I've done it before, this will actually shift itself into park when you turn the car off. That is kind of cool. Now, other four-wheel drive controls you need to talk about here. We've got a bunch of buttons here. This does look kind of similar to the previous generation Ranger and the Everest. You've got a locking rear differential. You've got another button here to go through the driving modes. When we're moving, I'll show you through those a little bit more. Also, you can turn off the auto stop start. You can turn off the parking sensors and the traction control as well. And finally, there is hill descent control there as well. Another thing to talk about, is this thing here. I said there were no rotary dials, but there is kind of one here. You don't use this one as often as you use the shifter. But because this is the V6 powered Ranger, you've got a different operation going on here. Now I'm gonna run you through this more concisely as well when we're driving because it is a handy thing to have and it's worth understanding mechanically how this works in comparison to other four wheel drive utes on the segment. But safe to say you've got a bit of all wheel drive on the bitumen, which is a good thing to have. Before I jump into the second row and show you things like space and amenities in the back here, I just want to run you through a few really handy things if you're going to be using this thing for more than just dropping the kids off at school. Firstly, when you are dropping the kids off at school, these are your top tether points. They are a little bit fiddly to get pressure on, but I feel like that is the case with pretty much every four-wheel drive ute out there trying to get seats in and out. It's probably more of a problem if you're taking seats in and out all the time, like I am. If you're installing them once, it's probably not that big of a deal, but I do like to see a bit of extra space in the back here. You can store a couple of little things tucked away in the back, but for extra storage, I really like this. Ford has kept the storage under the seat here, but they have worked on it as well, as you can see. I've fit a big extension strap in this side here. Looks like it's poking out way too far, but that seat does close because look at that underneath. They've actually scalloped out the bottom of the seat so you can use this storage. They've really sweated the details in a few regards in this Ranger. And you can really see it here in this case. On this side, got a plug repair kit and an extension strap as well. So that is really usable space. That is quite large actually, and really handy for when you're going camping or just carrying a few spares and that sort of thing. And as you can see, it shuts nice and easily. Now, let's climb in. As you can see here, I've got a good amount of leg room and plenty of headroom on offer. Now in that last Ranger review video we did, someone asked me how tall I was and I should probably point that out. I'm not actually 100% sure how tall I am. I haven't measured myself too often recently, but I'm slightly taller than the average Australian male. And for a bit more context in this regard, I've got Lucas the cameraman to jump in here. Please excuse my dodgy camera skills because they're not very good. But as you can see, Lucas, he is six foot three and he fits in with comfort in terms of legroom and headroom as well. So I would personally call that a win for this Ranger in terms of overall space. Other things to talk about in here, air vents, they have come into this Ranger, they were sorely missed in the last generation model, and you've also got a 12 volt power outlet there in this XLT specification. You've got some mat pockets there, and in terms of comfort, the seat does have a little bit of rake in there. It's a bit upright in comparison to most other cars. If you're coming from something like an SUV, or a sedan, this will feel a little bit more upright and a bit different, but if you're used to it, this is a good example of the second row of a four-wheel drive ute.
The Ford Ranger has always been one of the better utes to drive around on road and this next generation Ranger is the same deal but driving it off road now on some high speed dirt, there's been some loose section, there's been some hard packed sections as well. I would say it's even more impressive. There's a lot to like about the ease of driving for this thing, the ride quality and just the balance between steering through corners like this one, a little bit bumpy I'm sorry, but it just doesn't seem to have that imbalance that a lot of four-wheel drive utes have and that's even in rear-wheel drive mode. That's sort of similar to most other four-wheel drive utes. You can run this thing as two-wheel drive high range and four-wheel drive high range but you've also got 4A which is an automatic four-wheel drive mode. This Ranger has a electronically controlled clutch pack which that is the connection between the front and the rear wheels and that takes feedback from all sorts of different things and that will dictate how much drive gets pushed to the front and the rear and it works really well. I've tested it out driving through a few corners here. I've aimed for a few soft and loose patches driving quicker than you normally should just to see how that system reacts and it does react really well and it keeps this thing running straight. You don't have any moments of oversteer and a lot less understeer as well. So if you're gonna be covering a lot of Ks on dirt, touring around Australia, maybe your commute involves a bit of dirt like this, this Ranger feels really nice, well sorted and comfortable for this kind of driving. Our first run up the test hill was done without the diff lock engaged to see how traction control and suspension handles the rutted and rocky climb. And as you can see here, the car does start to work a little bit hard to spin the wheels before the traction control system kicks in. It did work and we got up the hill, but it's not a system that is as sharply or smoothly controlled as what you'd find in a Toyota Hilux, for example. And this time you can see how much difference that locking rear differential makes on a climb like this one. There's no more wheel slip from those front or back wheels and there's no more lurching, a lot more composure and we can go up nice and slow. The central clutch pack in this Ranger's transfer case, which does set it apart from other four-wheel drive utes in this segment, does seem to work quite well as a four-wheel drive system and it allows this Ranger to stay somewhere near the top of the pack in terms of raw off-road capability. The 10-speed automatic transmission, which has been recalibrated for this new Ranger to suit the V6, is also a great performer. Gearing feels low and well spaced, and you're able to effectively lock this Ranger into gear using the manual mode, plus those little buttons you have on the side of the shifter. So before we dig into a head-to-head -head comparison in the future, we would hazard a guess that a Toyota Hilux might still have the overall edge on a Ranger, thanks to the sharper off-road traction control and the relatively smaller dimensions overall. The extra wheelbase and width of this Ranger might help stability off-road, but the compromise here is ground clearance. The ramp over angle, 21 degrees for this XLT, will see a few belly rubs off-road, and it will also put the side steps in the firing line. And while Ford has worked on streamlining that tow bar design for a better departure angle at the rear, you do need to be careful about picking up the outboard corners of that rear plastic bumper and doing some damage. Ford lists the available ground clearance of the XLT at 234mm, which is dictated mostly by those 31.1 inch diameter tyres. Don't forget, a suspension lift won't necessarily increase your available underbody ground clearance here. Only a larger diameter tyre can do that. Ford also lists the weighting depth of the Ranger at 800mm, but it's worth remembering, like I showed before, the air intake is forward facing. Air is effectively drawn in from the top part of the grille. Got a tricky section of track in front of us here. It's quite steep. The digital cluster in front of me here is saying 16 degrees, but it's going to get steeper as I get up here. A little bit greasy. There are some ruts and holes, so this is going to be a good test of traction and clearance, I think. I've got my locking rear diff. I'm going to turn that on straight away. So I've got it there ready to go. Four wheel drive, low range. Let's see what happens carry a little bit of momentum because I really don't want to get stuck up here and have to have another chop at it. It's gripping pretty well so far. Might just dodge that big rut there though. Go around this side. All right, that was actually pretty easy. With the diff lock engaged, this Ranger feels really good. Extra wheelbase. Just gonna squeeze it past these trees here. Oh, I'm stuck there actually. There you go, wheels are spinning. Just 
slowed down a little bit too much there, but didn't want to hit a tree, so I'll just rock it back slightly. Foot on the brake. Let's see if I can just bump it up. Oh, I'm spinning a bit. There we go, we're up, we're good. It feels really stable. These tyres definitely help in comparison to a more highway terrain tyre. But the addition of 50 mils of wheelbase and 50 mils of wheel track, it might not sound like much, but it just helps this thing feel a little bit more planted off-road, I think. And the gearbox and the engine both work really well together. Big diesel V6, lots of torque, means you can punch the throttle quite easily and it's got that lazy delivery. And the gearbox doesn't feel too busy either, which I think is really important for a car like this, especially when you've got 10 speeds to pick from. It doesn't seem to be umming and ahhing and chopping and changing too much. And as I said at the start of this video, XLT with the V6 could be a really smart choice in the Ranger range. It's got the big engine, it's got a lot of tech inside still, you can tick a couple of options, but it's an impressive four-wheel drive ute overall. Well, I've got to say it, this Ford Ranger is my new favorite four-wheel drive ute in the segment. We already know that this was a solid ute in terms of the powertrain. We all love a big, talky V6 under the bonnet. Technology, safety, comfort, practicality, all those things are very good in this Ranger. But today, it proved its chops off-road, and that is very important for a four-wheel drive ute like this one. This thing feels stable off-road. It feels competent and capable. And if you want more capability than the base offering, you can modify and improve this thing. And Ford have actually engineered a lot of that into the standard car. They've thought about owners down the track actually modifying these things because that's what we do, right? And it's great to see Ford working with the aftermarket a little bit more on a level basis. So this is going to work for a lot of owners. It's comfortable for the day-to-day, -day, but it also does the important stuff off-road. Yes, it's more expensive than most others in the segment, but I do like this XLT V6 variant. It's a little bit cheaper than the more expensive models, and being more expensive, I think it still is the best in the segment. So if you're looking for a four-wheel drive ute that does everything, chances are you're gonna be zoning in on one of these. Now, I hope you liked this video today, and if you did, drop a comment below, let us know what you think about the video and also about this new Ford Ranger. Hit that thumbs up button too, because if you get more thumbs up on there, it means you like the videos, means my bosses like the videos, which means they like me doing these videos, which means I get to go out and do more videos. So please, thumbs up on the video. Thanks for watching.